Alright, so here's a police officer over here. <laughs> I always wait for the police officers. Yeah, I saw him there before. <laughs> yeah, he's watching. He's watching to see if people are stopping or not. And if you notice, I didn't do a full stop. I did a rolling stop. He waved to me and let me go. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw him. He was sitting on a chair. He's just watching. No, they, they understand. I'm telling you, in this area, they understand that most of the bike riders are going to do a rolling stop. They're not going to do a three second or five second stop. There's proof right there, all right? Hey, this is Russ. We're back out on the road again. So where are we headed today? Well, <laughs> nowhere special. <laughs> Notice that's become a theme now, nowhere special. We, uh, we're just riding. I'm continuing my ride. I did a video for Sunday. And I'm just continuing my ride. It's a nice day. It's 10 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. My wife has said, don't keep putting the dates. I don't give you the dates, I just tell you what the day is. She, she doesn't even like that either. She says it dates it. Well, I think you guys like to know why I do what I do, so I, I us, usually mention it. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just riding around. I can smell uh, charcoal. These guys got a barbecue going on. Take a look at these guys. I don't know what the special occasion is, but I think it's the church over here. I'm not sure. Probably. They got some type of special event happening. Yeah, I'm just riding around. I'm not doing anything special today. I just wanted to get out. You know, I, I actually prefer to be outside riding around. I don't like being outside doing nothing and sweating in the sun. <laughs> that part I don't like. But if I'm on a bike, and I'm able to go places, even if I don't have any specific place to go. Yeah, I like I like doing it. But the weather's got to be good. Today is good. We're talking low 70s, and uh, there's a nice breeze, nice cool breeze hitting you. You can't beat that. Okay, we're, I don't know if this guy's gonna go. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna let him go. He stopped first. He does have the right to do it. I'm not going to cut in there. I mean, it's, if I were to cut and go forward, that would be the equivalent of uh, if somebody uh, went to the right side when a truck driver is taking a right turn. <laughs> I've seen that happen. I, I haven't seen them hit, but I've seen awfully close where the guy has almost clipped them. So, yeah, you don't want to be riding up into something like that. You know, I'd, I'd rather stop behind him, let him know that he can go first, <laughs> let him go and let him... Uh, let them clear through. You don't want to get hit by a car taking a right. Here's an interesting thing. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I've told this story before. It's not well. It's not funny, but <laughs> looking back on it, it's kind of funny. My brother once got hit by a car. <laughs> see, that's not funny, right? <laughs> okay, here's what happened. All right, see the stop sign here. Okay, so some lady stopped at a stop sign. He and my sister decided to cross. Uh, the sidewalk, okay, so they were, they were on the sidewalk apparently, they were kind of crossing across. So I, I think the lady was looking to the left, make sure no cars were coming, and so she started going forward to, to turn. Well, she didn't realize that my brother and sister were there, and she turned right into my brother and knocked him off his bike, all right? Now, I wasn't there, my sister was there. But of course, they relayed the story back to me. And so uh, she bent. I think she bent his front fork. <laughs> it's always the front fork. Yeah, she knocked him off, bent his front fork, and this was a, a bike that he had gotten from the Chicago police auction. My dad bought the bikes for him and for me from the Chicago police auction. You know, when, when bikes are stolen and then uh, it's put into the property area, and if nobody claims it after a certain amount of time, the police department has to get rid of that stuff because it's just gonna be in the way. So they usually had uh, a, a police auction 
never been to an auction before. That was the very first time I've ever been to an auction. So my dad went there and, uh, and my brother and I, and, and uh, he bought us uh, used bikes. Well, they were stolen bikes, <laughs> but sold off by the Chicago Police Department. So anyways, the, anyway, the, the fork got bent on his, on his uh, bike, and it was, a, it was an old black Schwinn bike. But you know, Schwinn bikes are not cheap, but you know, this one was an older one. The lady was so distraught over it, she gave him, uh, they exchanged names and numbers, and uh, she called up and talked to my dad and told him what happened. And, and I mean, we were kids at the time, and uh, she, she says, I, I wanna buy him a, a new bike since I damaged his bike. I think she was more fearful that we weren't gonna, she, she wasn't gonna end up being sued by, by hitting a bike rider. <laughs> And, uh, you know, my dad said, well, it's, it's, it's an old bike. Don't worry about it. And the lady says, no, I insist. Bring him to the bike store and buy him another one of the same bike. So, <laughs> so we got a brand new Schwinn. Uh, I think it was just a three-speed commuter style bike. He got a brand new Schwinn bike. Compliments of uh, the lady who knocked him off his bike and bent the fork. I think he hurt his leg a little bit, but it wasn't so bad, really. Yeah, I think he said it was worth getting hit by the car to get a new bike. <laughs> and, well, that's how thick, that's how kids think, right? <laughs> yeah. It was a yellow bike. He bought a yellow bike. That way people can see him better. <laughs> now, I've not been hit by a car. I try to be careful. But see, in that, that instance, it wasn't his fault. He was just crossing uh, from, at a stop sign. It was the lady's fault who didn't see him and, and turned right into him. That happens. That happens. All right, there's still a bunch of bunch, uh, bike riders in front of me here. We're all gonna cross together. I'm telling you, there's, there's more people out on bikes nowadays. If you, if you watch, you can see a lot of people out on bikes. Okay, we're gonna let this guy go first. He's waiting to go to the right. Oh, she's waving me on. But we're all going now. Okay, she wants me to go. She wants you to go, you gotta go. If she's waving you on, she's telling you she wants you to go. All right, so we're gonna pass these guys. I am staying on the left here because I do want to make a turn. Plus I'm avoiding the parked cars. All right, let's take a left over here. Now we've done this uh, several times now when I had nothing better to do, <laughs> nowhere special to go. We've done, uh, we've done this area. There's some nice houses out here, I'll tell you. Take, take a look at this one here on, on the right. That's kind of cool. Now, now obviously, based, based on its... Uh, all right, I'm slowing down because I wasn't sure whether that car was going to stop or not. Um, based on its architecture, it doesn't match the rest of the houses in this area. I'm thinking they tore down the house and rebuilt a new house on there. And you'll notice that every now and then you'll see houses that just do not match the rest of the age of the rest of the houses in the, on the block. This happens usually when, you know, um, somebody likes the neighborhood or maybe they've been there for a while. They just said, you know, I'm, I'm not moving, I, but I want a new house. They'll tear it down and put a new house on there. I had a friend who actually did that as well. He liked the area he was at. He said that he liked his neighbors. He, he, he did not want to move, but he wanted, um, he wanted an updated house. So he tore the house down and built a new one. <laughs> yep, so it happens. I, I actually like um, cruising the neighborhoods. <laughs> I really do. I like doing that sometimes more than even being on the bike path, to tell you the truth. The bike path is okay, but you know, after a while, 
one forest preserve looks like the next forest preserve. <laughs> it really does. It, it, I mean, uh, the length of them are different. Um, but, uh, yeah, they start kind of looking the same after a while. One tree is the same as the next. Okay, this guy's going to let me go. I don't have to stop. He has a stop sign. Uh, I see a cat ahead of us that just ran across the road. I think that's a cat. I mean, that thing's kind of big. What is that thing? That is a cat. <laughs> The reason I question some of these things sometimes is I've seen red foxes. Let's, let's turn here. I've seen red foxes around our neighborhoods. I, I once woke up and uh, went outside and there's this fox walking across the front lawn. <laughs> and I'm not talking Sanford and Son red fox, okay? I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking red foxes. There was one time I was riding my uh, riding in my car. And I saw this fox walking along the sidewalk, so I started to follow along to see where he was going to go. He was looking at my car, and I was looking at him, <laughs> and we were doing about the same speeds, I, th I think. And I think he was wondering why I was following along. I, I just wanted to see where he was going to go. We do have coyotes sometimes out in this area too. Uh, I haven't seen any in my neighborhood, but I've seen them in other neighborhoods. Yep, coyote just walking right out. And, uh, they, they tend to try to go after the, the stray cats and whatever that might be along that it sees. You know, there's some people, they let their cats outside. Yeah, if, if your neighborhood has coyotes, I don't think that's a smart thing to do. Because uh, we hear reports all the time of uh, their cats being taken in yeah, never to be seen ever again. They take, they go after the dogs too. Little dogs and, and the like. Uh, let's take a right. Big Lutheran church off to that side. I, every, like I said, every time I see a church, I always wonder, did I take a, did I do a wedding at that church or not? <laughs> Not at this one. <laughs> yeah, I used to shoot uh, wedding photos, as, as you might know. One of the things, one of the many things I did in photography, it's wedding photography. So I have the X Needle helmet on. Uh, I'm looking down here. I don't know if you guys can see it on the reflection. Let me see if I can angle down. Can, can you guys see that? Can you see me? <laughs> That's the front uh, front headlight on the X Needle helmet. And on the rear, it's got a blinking light, which I kind of like. People have said that they actually could see it even in the sunlight. I'll, I'll ask people, hey, can you see my light? It's, I mean, I can't really tell. I don't, uh, I have it on, I can't tell, right? They said, yeah, I can see it blinking. turn here. It's a lot of grass. What is this? Is this over here? Is that people's backyards? I mean, their houses there. Is that their backyard? That's a lot of property if it is. I mean, are they responsible for cutting that? They, maybe they have an association. Yeah. I would hate to cut the... Look at this. I would hate to have to cut the grass in there. <laughs> that's, and, and looking at how they're striped like that, it's got to be a service that's doing it. Our lawn cutting guys uh, also cut it on an, on an angle like that. It gives it a little design. Oh, the fence. Let me tell you about the fence. I have not told you guys about the fence. Yeah, the kid finished the fence. Um, what was that, a couple weeks ago? Something like that. I know our videos were way ahead and everything. It's kind of hard to comment to you guys. But uh, yeah, he finished the fence. It's because school had started up this past week uh, on a Thursday. And so he finished the fence like a week before school started. And I, and I said to him, I says, yeah, I know I didn't give you any deadline of when to finish this. But he says, but school is starting. I says, I would hate for you to have to keep painting, painting the fence while having to go to school and concentrating on your studies and stuff. So he, he stepped it up a little bit and finally finished the fence. <laughs> 
So how did it look? It looks pretty good. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna post a photo. People have asked me if I could do that. No, like I said, the entrance to the Bat Cave stays secret. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna see my house. Um, yeah, he finished it, and so like like I told you, we painted three sides of fence. Okay, one side of the fence uh, has. Um, white paint on it and then the other side has a white paint as well so that one one panel or the one side of the fence is painted front and back the other panel is only painted white on one side but the other side we left alone now somebody had mentioned that you know if you do that you can warp it and all that stuff well it, it is what it is then I guess I um, I left it the way it is because our other neighbor prefers a more natural look and uh, and that paint that fence is painted. Okay, it was it's just old, so it it was painted at one time, but it just looks you know more run down at this point. So he did a pretty good job. I told him you know on this side you have to paint it so that we see it, but that they don't see the white. And sure enough, you know I was in their backyard, um, and yeah, you can't you can't see it. He, he did a good job. He hit it really well. All right, we're not going to go down here because that street is not one we want to do. That is, that is not one we're going to do. That's a big street. We're going to turn around again. Again, I don't do U-turns. I kind of hop and turn. <laughs> All right, there we go. So yeah, he's done. It took a long time. It took him, took him the whole summer. Yeah. But, but really, if you think about it, that only happened because uh, of a lot of things that he had going on. Uh, he took his time, of course, you know, like I said, sometimes he'll take a little break here and there. I never pushed him. I didn't, I didn't really care that much. I just needed to get it done this summer. And um, it was too hot, it rained. He went on vacation twice. <laughs> he had soccer. He worked at another uh, job that he, he worked at a hardware store. He, he had a regular job. He took a couple side jobs <laughs> for other people. Yeah, he was busy, but you know, that pushed our project way, way, way back. But you know, we, we don't really use our backyard much I mean I, I don't actually stay out there and enjoy the backyard I just use it to, uh, I, you know I have my smokers and my grills back there and that's all I use it for really but I will say that now that it's painted white it matches all the other white fences that are around us looks nice yeah I think it was better to have painted it than to replace that fence with a, a, a new one it would have cost more Obviously, the wood is older now than, than had we bought a new one. But, I mean, new ones, they, they were talking anywhere between eight to $10,000 for, for the fences. And, uh, yeah, we're, we were going to do that. We, at one time, we were even thinking just take it, the whole thing down and forget it. I mean, we don't have, we don't have, sorry, i got to knock a bug off of me. I think I smeared them. <laughs> um, we don't have animals, we don't have kids. Um, well, my, well, I have a daughter, but she's married and gone. <laughs> um, so yeah, we don't really need the fence. So we were thinking, you know, why should we have the fence? Maybe we should just take it all down. But it's there, you might as well use it. So painting it was, uh, was the best option. Yeah, we probably could have got it cheaper if we hired a professional painter, quite frankly. They probably would have primed it. They would have known to prime it. We didn't know any better. They probably would have primed it so it didn't suck up all the paint and, uh, and then painted it. But And then they probably would have spray painted it and would have been done a lot quicker. He hand painted that fence, essentially. The spray paint he tried, uh, he did a couple of panels, but then the... Uh, it kept clogging up. I think I think the the paint needed to be thinned, but we didn't do that, so obviously he couldn't do it. So he essentially hand painted most everything. That's what took him so long. But we paid him enough money that he said it was it was worth it. 
So, yeah, help the kid out. Help the kid out, cost us more money probably than it was worth. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Taught him a lesson. Here's, here's what I told him. Never take a, a job on unless you know fully what's, what to expect of that job. You know, if you're given a price and you say, okay, you agree to it, you know, the, the owner is going to tell you, well, we agreed to that price. We ended up tripling his uh, price because we realized it was a lot harder job than we had all thought and we were going to take advantage of the kid. So he got, he got decently paid, but it did take him a long time. He spent all summer. Well, you can't really say that because he, did, he wasn't there every single day all summer, right? He was day, you know, he'd do a day or two uh, later. He'd, he'd come for like one or two, two days a week spend an hour or two and then go home so really he didn't he didn't spend lots of time he just did a little here a little there so i think that's why he felt it was still worth it because uh it, it wasn't like i mean a couple times he's, he spent uh eight ten hours a day to do it he did that several times yeah, i don't know four or five times <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> i'm guessing and uh Maybe three or four times, I think. He spent all day to do it. Yeah, let's turn here. So the fence is done. Well, what do you think of these uh, neighborhoods? I know we haven't been talking about bikes on this one. We're just talking about odds and ends, but I wanted to at least update you guys. And you guys that are new, yeah, we don't know. We just do it this way. We usually talk about e-bikes. But it's a lazy day for me. It's nice and breezy. It's, it's a cool breeze. It's, uh, this, is, this is my ideal temperature of riding a bike. 70, 71, 72, something like that. Nice breeze. Slightly overcast, not fully sunny. Yeah, you can't beat it. This, this is the absolute best weather to ride. Yeah, I'm looking at these houses. There are some houses here. They do not match the rest of the houses. Yeah, okay, here's a good example. Here's a guy who's building one. You see that? That's a brand new construction going up there. And it's next to houses that are older. So this is not uncommon. This happens. I don't even know what direction I'm in. I, I don't usually pay attention where I'm going when I decide to just ride around. I just ride. If I decide to turn, I turn. Let me, let me see where we're at. What is this street? Oh, this is the this is the Arlington Heights Library, I believe. Okay. We're heading into downtown Arlington Heights again. We've done this before. This is Euclid Avenue that we're crossing across. We are on Dunton for those who are local. Yeah, let's go across. Let's see what's what's down in this area. How's my uh, battery? I'm at 40%. I've done 19 miles right now. I've been throttling a lot too, so I'm not going to get 40 miles of range on this battery. Some of the lights are longer, I think, than they should be. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, let's see what's down in this area. Oh, thank you so much, too. I know that uh, at least one of you guys had placed an order for a Magicycle Cruiser Pro during the promotion that uh, Magicycle was offering. And, uh, you know, that promo is still running until Sunday. I'm on, I'm on Saturday right now. But by the time you see this video, that promo would have been over with. But I know that at least one of you guys did it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for doing it correctly and using my affiliate link. <laughs> that helps me out. I noticed it, that's how I know. And then I think you made a comment as well. I saw your comment. Thank you so much for that, I appreciate it. Magicycle appreciates it too. You know, they sell a bike during something like that, giving away all those mirrors, so it's worth it for them. Yeah, yeah, so thank you for doing it. All right, that's Northwest Highway. Well, let's see, what should we do? I think we will turn left here. Let's take a left. What's in this area here? Bistro Chen, look at this place. We've been here before. It's a Chinese restaurant. I just grab the camera. So if you see my hand sometimes, it's because I'm grabbing the camera and turning. We are kind of in the downtown area, I think, of Arlington Heights. It's a lot busier, that's for sure. It's the Arlington Heights Road up ahead. Yeah, let's go further up. Let's see where, where it takes us. I just got to keep an eye on my battery. Parrot Stars, it says. Par what is Parrot Stars? I don't know what that is. Is that a restaurant? What is that? <laughs> Parrot Stars? Oh, the dog's very well behaved over here. Can you guys see that? Hasn't noticed me yet. Maybe I'll start barking if I start riding. <laughs> the dog seems really uh, well behaved. We are on Minor Street, it says. Minor and Arlington Heights Road. Here we go. All righty. We are in territory we're not uh, normally at. Here's another house around the corner. It's being built. You see that? It's being built up here. And it's going to be different than the rest of the uh, houses in the neighborhood. Like I said, it happens a lot. People like the neighborhood, they just build another house on it. All right, let's take a let's take a left turn here. We'll start heading back towards our own areas. <laughs> All right, I think we're enough for today, huh? I appreciate you guys watching and staying along and listening to my rambling on like this video go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so more rides to come more e-bike information to come talk to you guys next time